Have you ever seen a movie called Euro Trip? It's your bog standard coming of age American Pie style flick. I'd actually go as far as saying it's one of the greatest movies ever made. But anyway, they're on their Euro Trip. I can't remember where. Bratislava. Thank you. Yep, so they get to Bratislava and they're absolutely skinned. Between the four of them, they've got a total of $1.83 American. The movie then cuts to them eating lobster and just generally bawling out as they realise these dollars go pretty far in this country. Nickel. The joke is one of exchange rates and the relative purchasing power of certain currencies on the global stage. As a younger one, I used to watch this movie. I used to think it was hilarious. You know, everybody laugh at the Eastern European country as us powerful Westerners just roll in there with our currencies and lord it up. But for some reason, it doesn't feel funny anymore. They've crashed the pound. Lowest level ever. Down, 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 down. It's now the great British peso. I remember when one of these could basically get you $2. You'll go to America with an empty suitcase to fill with stuff because it was that cheap for us Brits. Come back just head to toe Nike with a year supply of Lucky Charms. He's got his Lucky Charms. And enough crazy sweets to get your whole year six class jacked up for the day. But all of that has come to a head. In the last 12 months alone, the pound has lost 30 cents of purchasing power on the dollar. What is going on and what should investors do? I think the best place to start is with a brief understanding of why the pound is collapsing. Like anything, currency is affected by supply and demand. More demand for a currency and its price relative to others will increase. Less demand and that price relative to others will fall. I said relative because it's also key to understand that a price of a currency is in comparison to another. So for example, the pound could weaken, but if the euro also weakens by the exact same amount at the same time, then their price relative to each other can stay the same. The price of a country's currency relative to others really reflects the strength or perceived strength of that country's economy. So the pound at the minute and thus the UK economy is seen as weak or undesirable, whereas the dollar, which represents the US economy, is seen as a place or a safe haven where people want to park their cash. This is causing the two currencies to pull away from each other. Whilst researching this, I found three main reasons why this could happen. Number one, inflation. Countries with lower inflation tend to have stronger currencies as that currency maintains its purchasing power. Actually, since World War II, the pound has fallen versus the dollar because basically America has maintained a lower inflation rate over that period. So what needs to happen each year is they need to readjust the balance between the pound and the dollar to readjust the purchasing power because essentially the pound is losing value at a quicker rate than the dollar is. Darshner, how are we doing on inflation in the UK at the minute? This is only the fourth time in 70 years that inflation has breached 10%. Right, solid. OK, well, there's always the second factor, economic and political stability. If your country's economy is seen as growing and the politics are stable, that will attract outside foreign investment, thus increasing the demand for the domestic currency. Let's head over to our newly appointed leader, Liz, to see what she's got to say about the state of politics in this country at the minute. Massive demolition job. Yeah, uh, thanks, Liz. The final factor is interest rates, and this is probably part of the reason the dollar has been doing so well. When a country raises its interest rates, that means the returns on things like government bonds become more attractive to external investors. Yet again, increasing demand for the currency. America has been far more aggressive with rate rises than the UK. They sit at the time of recording this at 3.25%, whereas in the UK, it's 2.25%. But inflation, interest rates, and the absolute circus that is British politics aside, the pace at which the pound has collapsed in recent days has been pretty alarming, right? Down, 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 down. It appears to have just lost ground against all currencies. I mean, just take a look at the pound versus the Vietnamese dong. So I've mentioned Vietnam for a reason, not because it would be easy for me to make a joke about pounding on my dong gum. Far too mature for that. But I think it's a strange comparison, isn't it, to compare the UK to Vietnam, especially from an economic perspective. But that's exactly what finance professionals are doing at the minute. Countless media outlets are reporting that the UK is trading like an emerging market. Once the greatest superpower on earth, people are now questioning if it shares more in common with Turkey, India, and yes, Vietnam. Okay, maybe they're being a bit dramatic, but I wanted some further context on this. In the Discord for this channel, there's a guy called Finn who worked for a hedge fund. It's super useful having him in the group because his knowledge on these topics is excellent. I asked him for his thoughts on this emerging market comparison. I'll leave the full conversation up here, so if you want to pause, you can click and have a read of it. But basically, he said that developed countries will tend to trade on fundamentals. Interest rates, inflation data, things like this will affect the price of their currency relative to others, whereas emerging markets tend to trade much more on sentiment, on people's feelings and emotions towards how they think the country is doing. The recent collapse off the back of the mini budget was an example of the British pound trading on sentiment. Kwarteng dropped his budget and the world just went, nah, 
we want out of the UK. Not based on fundamentals, but based on the sentiment around the UK as a result of this announcement. And what that announcement did was completely destroy any confidence that external investors had in the UK economy going forwards. So much so that the International Monetary Fund has come out and asked the UK to reconsider the tax cuts. The International Monetary Fund coming out and undermining Liz Truss's Conservative Party in this manner is just really not a good look. But just how bad is this for the UK? The problem the UK has is we're a net importer of stuff. What that means is we bring more stuff into this country than we push out. That should come as no surprise to anyone because if we relied solely on UK produce, we'd all be smashing turnips on our Hovis bread and washing it down with a pint of Tetley's for breakfast. Bitter, not the tea. This fall in the pound now makes everything we buy from abroad relatively more expensive. We can see this at petrol stations as the price of oil is now the same it was pre-Russia's invasion. But we're still paying loads at the pump because of the weak pound because oil is priced in dollars globally. My mate the other day was moaning about the price of Lurpak. That's Danish butter, mate. We import that. These rising costs worsen the inflation problem here in the UK and thus lead to the currency weakening more. So we have an issue. The likely response will be the Bank of England increasing interest rates in order to strengthen the pound. Scratch that. As I am recording this right now, it's like breaking news this, the Bank of England have announced they're gonna buy government bonds to stabilize the market, AKA the money printers are turning back on. Aye, 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 crazy times. I'm just editing this video and we can't really brush over this point, can we? We can certainly brush over the state of this fluffy jumper though. I refuse to put the heating on, what can I say? So I'm not gonna sit here and pretend to be an expert in the bond market but I know a lot of people want to know what the hell happened yesterday and why did the Bank of England see it fit to intervene in the bond market. Link below and in the end cards is a full 30 minute video by the best finance creator on YouTube, Pensioncraft. He goes into loads of detail around all of this. And it's a direct result of the incompetence. And really this is me just trying to summarize his 30 minute video in 10 to 15 seconds. So full credit to Pensioncraft. Since the budget announcement, certain bonds which are seen as some of the safest investments around have halved in value. This really shouldn't happen. And the drop was so big that certain pension companies that hold these types of investments received what are called margin calls, as we can see from this news post in the other day. A margin call is basically saying you don't have enough cash on balance to cover the bets you've made. Deposit more cash now or we will close your position. In order to meet those margin calls, these pension companies were forced to sell their most liquid assets, their easiest to convert to cash, which just so happen to be these bonds. So basically what happens then is these bond prices are falling, forcing these pension companies to sell those bonds, more bonds enter the market for sale and the price drops further and we get this doom loop spiral downwards. The situation was compared to the run on the bank that nearly collapsed Northern Rock. So the Bank of England stepped in to fix this. They did this by buying these types of bonds the funds are dumping, creating demand and increasing the price, stopping this doom loop. I think what was so shocking about this yesterday is the speed at which the Bank of England had to act. All of this came about and they had to step in within a day. And what got people so confused was this is the complete opposite of what they expected the Bank of England to do. They should be selling bonds now and winding down the positions that they purchased in order to support the economy rather than buying more. But I think this really just speaks to the carnage that this mini budget has caused for the UK economy. And really the Bank of England now are just dodging punches and swerving curveballs that are being thrown at them as a result of this mini budget. And it's a direct result of the incompetence at this point, it's honestly next to impossible to predict what's gonna happen next in the UK economy. And sat here as a finance creator, it's almost hard to keep up. So I think let's just focus on how does the fall in pound impact investors? Would you be surprised if I told you it wasn't all bad? Yeah, sure. British companies like Tesco's at the minute are gonna be hurting because they're a mass importer of goods that they put on their shelves. But a lot of UK businesses actually generate their revenues from outside of the UK. And if you're a business that generates revenues in other currencies, you get to benefit from the higher conversion of those currencies back into pounds. The FTSE 100, which is the top 100 companies in the UK, really features a load of global businesses. I mean, we've all heard how BP and Shell are doing pretty well at the minute, but 70% of the revenue generated by the top 100 companies in the UK comes from foreign markets. Another consideration is for companies that sell services abroad, foreign buyers might look at the UK businesses and go, hmm, we can now buy more stuff off them for the same amount of money. This could help increase the sales of those UK businesses. Another thing, and probably the most direct impact that you're gonna see as an individual investor, is probably better for me to show you than to tell you. I'm just gonna log into Trading212 because they show this really clearly. I'll put it up on screen for you. As you can see, I have a position in Alphabet. I like them mainly because every penny I earn comes from their platforms. I'm currently down 12% on this position, which is isn't great, but a lot of big tech is down at the minute, or at least that's what I'm telling myself anyway. But then I click on it and I scroll down and you see this here, the FX impact. My position is actually down 30%, but the FX impact, as in the fact the dollar has got stronger, is softening that blow by 20%. The strength 
strength of the dollar relative to the pound is plastering over the holes in people's portfolios like Lerpak on crumpets. And anyone that's invested in American companies is benefiting from that relationship in the minute, both from just the sheer price of the assets themselves, as well any dividends that you're receiving from America are priced in dollars, so you're getting more pounds for that conversion now. But it also works the other way. If you're buying American businesses now, they are relatively more expensive than they were a few months ago. And if the pound does recover, that FX impact will work the other way. So what should investors do? Well, that's the trillion pound question, isn't it? But I wouldn't worry because a trillion pound will soon be worth nothing anyway. But all jokes aside, anything that involves waiting it out, trying to time the market or changing your investment strategy at this stage, in my opinion, is a risky thing to do. Now, you'll remember I said at the start of this that the long-term relationship between the pound and the dollar since World War II has been the pound has fallen. But if we take a look at the view since the 80s, we can see the fluctuations in the price over that time. This isn't a one-way street. If inflation peaks in America and they start to reverse the interest rates, the dollar could fall. Or we could see a decline in the global tensions that have been forcing people into the dollar as a safe haven. America will also be limited on how high they can raise interest rates without a fear of of sparking a huge recession, giving the UK the ability to catch up. Or the pound could continue to slide, especially if confidence in the UK and its decision making at the minute continues to worsen, which I think is highly likely considering the message that's coming out from the Bank of England today is just going to send such mixed messages to the market. Nobody knows really what is going on at the minute. And that's the point. When it comes to currencies and their movements, nobody knows what is going on. Not even Scotty. It really is a great movie. Many of you will be sat there now thinking, I'm not going to buy American businesses until the pound recovers, or I'm gonna look for value in the UK instead. Now I do get this logic, especially for the stock pickers amongst us, but I would counter this with, what happens if you sit on the sidelines and the pound just continues to fall? You know, the prices of the pound a few weeks ago look relatively attractive now to investors to purchase American stocks. So anyone that sat on the sidelines saying, I'm just gonna wait this out, could see the pound just continue to fall. There's absolutely no guarantee that the pound will rise. As a global investor, I just think predicting currencies and the movements of them day to day is next to impossible. That's why Greg Secker sells courses and doesn't just make millions on predicting the Forex market instead. There's absolutely no guarantees that the pound will ever recover. In the same way, sentiment could change tomorrow and it could recover quite quickly. I don't like sitting on the sidelines waiting for things to happen that I just can't predict or control. Exchange rates are just one of many variables that go into your overall investment return. If I changed my investment approach every time one of these variables changed, I would spend my whole time just panicking, rushing around, wondering where to put my cash. I said it when times were good and now I'll say it when they're bad. For me, an investment into a globally diversified index fund is the best way to go because that allows me to gain access to lots of different companies in lots of different sectors, in lots of different countries, operating in lots of different currencies. I'm not overly exposed to the pound. I spread it like Lurpak far and wide. Right, before you go, really this is all a tale of two sides. It isn't just the pound falling, it's the dollar strengthening. So you should watch this video here to understand why that is the case and how that impacts investors. Because after watching 12 minutes of me talk about currency, the next thing you definitely need in your life is more conversation about currency. Gotta love that exchange rate.